Don't miss this stuff. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Five minutes after nine o'clock. Um, gosh, I'm looking forward to this next interview. You know, uh, Robin and I are in the music business in addition to the radio business. And and we, whether it's radio or music, the one thing that we have the luxury of being able to do, I, I guess music does have its limitations, but not as much as sports. But but we could technically, I mean, look at how Paul Harvey, I mean, he Paul Harvey did broadcast all the way up until the time he was, you know, too old to do them. Uh, and look at Paul McCartney or, or Tony Bennett. I mean, they're still singing and, and they're up in, up in their years. But when you're an NFL player, any sports player, really, chances are there's going to come an end to, the, to your days as a professional athlete, which is kind of, kind of a sad thing. Um, we kind of saw this firsthand, although, although the gentleman I'm going to name... Um, clearly has been doing wonderful things with his life. His name is Don Nottingham. Don, as you, many of you know, was involved with the uh, Special Olympics program here in Ocala, and I believe uh, I believe his profession now is insurance, although that, that never came up when we were working with him to help promote the Special Olympics. And for those who don't know, Don Nottingham was uh, with the Miami Dolphins for forever, plus a couple of other teams, the human bowling ball, if I remember his uh, moniker. Uh, Dr. George E. Kuntz might be a name you're, you're familiar with. Robin is trying to get him on the phone right now. Uh, Robin's ex- especially excited because, Robin being a, a Packers fan, um, the, George Kuntz was one of the uh, Green Bay Packers, and he I think it was like 10 years he was with the uh, Packers. Dr. Richard S. Jones is also on the phone. He's actually on the phone right now. He is a professor of sociology and a faculty athletics representative at Marquette University. And the book that they both have written, along with a third author whose name is James uh, uh, Holstein, uh, the book is called Is There Life After Football? Surviving the NFL. I think this is a great topic, especially with the Super Bowl on everybody's mind right now. Uh, all right, that's long enough for an intro. I don't need to say any more. Good morning, Dr. Jones. How are you? Are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, there you are. Good, good. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Thanks for uh, inviting us on today. You're welcome. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from my house in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In Milwaukee, see, Robin, it, it's it's a, it's a Wisconsin home reunion today. Um, I, and forgive me for not knowing this. Are you also a former football player? Uh, I wish. Oh, I, <laughs> okay. was one of, I was one of those kids that grew up uh, dreaming uh, of of stardom, but having zero athletic ability. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm sure you have plenty of talents. I don't, I don't think God leaves any of us out. But, but let me ask you this. When I was talking about the, the singers, for example, Paul McCartney and Tony Bennett, I, I mean, not to slight them in any way because I'm a big fan of both of them, but you do hear comments sometimes, oh, they should hang it up, it's they're over the hill. Do, do, I mean, does that same thing happen for football players but way earlier in their life? Well, it does happen way earlier, um, but, uh, I mean, the, the important issue here is that most players do not or are not aware that the end is near. Uh, and while we might be concerned of rockers uh, continuing to perform into their 50s and 60s, right. you know, most football players, pro football players, are done by the mid-20s. Wow. Wow. And, and in uh, Dr. Kuntz's case, um, how young was he when he had to retire from football? Well, George is one of the lucky ones because most football players would like, you know, to have at least a 10-year career. The average length of an NFL career is three and a half years for those who actually make it. Isn't that something? George played for nine years, uh, eight of them with the Green Bay Packers. And his last year, he played with the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Oh wow! So Robin is not here. So, so, so the, Robin, Robin is a, a big football fan for for uh, the Packers. Yeah, and Seattle beat them on Sunday. So <laughs> Seattle beat the Packers on Sunday. So that's pretty. And iconic. we're in mourning as a result. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's a lot of listeners, peculiarly enough, who are uh, on the same page as you. So tell me, tell me about the idea for the book. Before, I, what did you find out, Robin? Is Doctor Joan, uh, Doctor Kuntz coming on? Uh, his uh, pub, uh, publicist is checking right now. Uh, he's traveling. He's in New York right now, so his uh, uh, publicist is going to get in touch with him in New York. Okay. By the way, this must be a, uh, not unusual for NFL players. We had the same problem with with Don Nottingham, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a hard time nailing him down so we could get the, the meetings we had to do. I'm half teasing. 
There was there's some truth to that, though. So how did the idea for the book come, uh, Dr. Jones? How did the idea for the book? Well, um, this project, I mean, the seed for this project actually occurred well over six years ago when uh, I met George, uh, uh, when he just began his graduate program at Marquette. Um, and he came into my office talking about a project. He was currently working as player development uh, specialist for the Green Bay Packers. And he was interested in studying, you know, kind of the transitions that NFL players make as they come into the league and as they leave the league, because that's what the player development uh, specialists do for, the, for their NFL teams. And so uh, George wrote a dissertation then uh, over the next uh, four or five years that focused on player transitions. And once he was done, uh, then uh, Jim Holstein and I decided to see if George would like to expand the study uh, to make it a much larger, to include a, a bigger sample of uh, players. And uh, so for the last couple of years, we've been working specifically uh, on the book. And, and how did you expand it? What did you do? Did you speak to other, other players? Well, uh, uh, Jim and I um, started uh, hanging out with George <laughs> uh, when he'd go back to Green Bay for uh, alumni events, right. Packer alumni events, um, which is certainly a wonderful thing for a sports fan to get to rub elbows with the, the former great. Well, and can I, I don't mean to interrupt, but can I ask you about the fame part of it? Because here's what Robert and I were able to be privileged to be near. I mean, with Don Nottingham, he's obviously a famous player. He has f friends who are famous players, and they can actually capitalize on that fame, in, the, in our case, to help raise money for Special Olympics, which, yeah. which was outstanding. I mean, they take something that they have that many people don't have, and they use it for something good. It, it, and that seems like the perfect use for something that most of us will never have, which is fame. Yes, and fame is both a, a blessing uh, and a curse. Um, so that the, the development uh, in the book we refer to the glory itself. Uh, and so uh, with football comes a certain amount of glory, uh, there are a lot of perks to being a college football player and then moving on to the NFL. And as you continue to pursue that glory and try to capitalize on it, um, um, it comes with certain um, potential problems uh, as well. When the game is over, <laughs> the lights of glory dim. Uh, people 16. aren't nearly as interested in you as you w were. Oh, wow. Or as they once were. And, you know, the players are at a bit of a loss, you know, once their career is over. Is. Trying to, some try to capitalize on their past glory. Uh, and, and, and those players seem to continue to struggle to try to find something that will be as a great as their playing days were. Okay, it all, it almost sounds you know what it sounds like, and boy, it's kind of weird to compare NFL players to uh, supermodels. Yeah, but I think supermodels <laughs> go through the same thing. After a while, uh, okay, all right, you're 30 years old, you're a little bit too old. We want 18 years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm guessing that that happens for them as well. Um, Doctor George E. Kunz, I believe, is on the other line. Um, and just to reintroduce, um, first of all, Doctor Kunz, I know you're listening in. Uh, we we've been speaking to Doctor Jones about the book you and he have written, "Is There Life After Football." And uh, George Coons played professional football for a decade, the majority of those years with the Green Bay Packers. I think I had that right. Or was it nine years? Uh, he was winning Super Bowl 31. Robin is a big fan. Go Packers. By the way. And uh, good morning. And what an honor to speak, say hello to you, Dr. Coons. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Where are you right now? I'm in New York. I'm in New York. I have an uh, interview uh, a little bit late on after lunch. So, uh, oh, okay. Okay. I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time. Can you hear me okay? We hear you fine. And can, could you hear Dr. Jones on the other line? Could you hear him? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay. Good morning, Dr. Jones. Hi, George. <laughs> uh, well, you know what I want to ask you, uh, George? I wanted to ask, is it okay to re address you as George, first of all? Yep. Okay. Yep, George is fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask you if... <sighs> 
if it was a letdown or did you know it was coming? Like, were you prepared for the the sudden you, you're you, you've got the glory moment and suddenly somebody else has it like a supermodel who's retiring or something right uh you know I, I knew in the back of my mind that my career was going to come to an end but um i think it's something uh just like death of a of a loved one uh you can never be over prepared uh for uh you know because when when, when it did happen that I was out of the National Football League. When that day came, I wasn't, from a, a mental standpoint, uh, from, from a financial standpoint, yes, for the most part, but from a mental standpoint, I wasn't I, I wasn't prepared for the loss that I was experiencing when I was out of the, the National Football League. It was, uh, it was a void that I couldn't really explain. Is that right? You know, we can also compare this to uh, veterans, people who've uh, chosen the military as a career. You know, they go 20 years. They're only like 40 years old sometimes when they retire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they must have a... But, but in their case, the military has recognized this, the transition from one type of a lifestyle to another. Does the NFL do anything at all? I don't think the, the modeling unions do anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> Does, does the NFL do anything to prepare you for this? Well, uh, they, they do have some resources. They are allocating resources now because they do have a uh, – each each team has a director of player engagement or director of player um, uh, development. And uh, and that, uh, that position is uh, geared to help players with their transition into the National Football League and, and helping uh, the veteran players with their transition out of that – out of the National Football League, but but the thing is, uh, are they willing to listen and embrace the information and the, and the resources that are on hand? That's the key. Because you know, uh, you know, I was very very fortunate to play until I was 32 years old, but I was uh, fairly young uh, from a worldly perspective. Yeah. But from a from a, from a, from, a NL, from an NFL perspective, when you hit 30 years old, they start looking at you no, sideways. No. But right, but. How does the uh, uh, transition work from when you go from playing football from high school to college and then you're in the pros? It has to be three different animals. Oh, yeah. It's a whole different animal because, you know, when you go from high school to uh, to college, they can redshirt you. If, they, if your parents, if the coaches determine that you're not uh, mature enough from a, from a mental standpoint and even a physical standpoint, they can redshirt you. Uh, you know, you have uh, uh, five years to, uh, uh, to you know, to uh, your 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 college career is about five years, and and uh, but you get four years to actually play on the uh, out there on the field. So uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, the environment is totally different. Uh oh, I, I think I did something here. Um, hold on. Oh, Doctor Jones. Doctor Jones, you still there? Yeah, you okay. uh, lost you for about Okay, I'm sorry. I, 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 I wanted to ask you a question, and I didn't mean to cut you off, George. Uh, um, uh, George, George ref- compared uh, retiring. I didn't cut you off, did I, George? You're still there, right? No, no, you, no, okay. you go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I'm here. Oh. I, 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 you compared it uh, to losing a loved one, uh, the death of a loved one, which I didn't, you know, it didn't occur to me that it was that big until I heard you say that. And and from a sociology point of view, that's why I want to address Dr. Jones with this. Um, wh- is that common? I mean, to actually look at your career like a, like a human being who has died. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I, I think what George is, is trying to say is that there is this dramatic loss and that people are kind of out to sea. Uh, uh, for a year, two, even in five years, you have to realize that the likelihood of getting a, a scholarship to play at a Division One program is almost like winning the lottery, uh, and the odds of making it to the NFL are even greater. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that in order to be successful, you have to go all in, right? That everything becomes about football. Your lives are structured around uh, the game. Your friends are your teammates. Um, you know, everything becomes football. And if you're not prepared for the end, if you haven't been thinking about what you might do once, uh, once the game is over, 
um, it sneaks up on you, <clears throat> and the, and the, you're you're done. You're sitting at home. Yeah, the phone's yeah. not ringing anymore, and you know you're wondering. You had a dream before to be a football player, but what's the next dream? What am I going to do? And I think that's what happens when we lose a loved one. We have this profound loss, and we don't know how we're going to go on. And I think uh, for uh, many former NFL players, they're in that situation. We just had a great ride. What am I going to do now? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how many people will read the book that you both have written, Is There Life After Football, Surviving the NFL, who have nothing to do with football, and will be still able to relate to what you're talking about. Oh, Most I definitely. Think so. We make uh, many parallels. To, I mean, George received a letter a few years ago from a police officer. Uh, and the police officer was talking about the pro- profound loss um, when his career ended because he's kind of lost the camaraderie of his uh, colleagues. Um, he really hadn't th- prepared to do anything else uh, when it was over. We make similar comparisons to people, in, as you mentioned earlier, people in the military. Uh, it, it usually deals with folks who end up <clears throat> retiring uh, or leaving their profession uh, at an age that we is much too young for retirement. And you know, uh, we have uh, to develop a new plan. And uh, George, how, how does it uh, um, how does it uh, affect the families, like the the wives and the uh, children, because they're in the spotlight as long as the players in the spotlight. And then when you retire, they don't have that spotlight anymore. How do they give you support hmm. through that retirement? Well, I wouldn't say that it's a it's a huge um, effect on this on the family uh, for the uh, spotlight perspective but a lot of the a lot of the wives and the significant others they kind of put their life on hold um because they, they they met a lot of the players when they were in college and and they have a degree and they put their life on hold so now when once the, the player uh career is over with and and a lot of time that happens after three and a half years because that's the average length of uh, a player's career um they want to kind of use their degree and, and, and get on with their career so so there are some some issues there because the player may think that uh you know i'm not being supported by my spouse and and things like that but uh as far as um the lack of spotlight i don't think that the players and the kids really have uh, uh the wives and the kids really have a, a issue with that because a lot of times the kids are very very young Anyway, mm-hmm. do, do you know, I wanted to point something out, too, that really needs to be pointed out. It's that we are so far focusing on the the disappointing part of, at the end of the re, at the early retirement. But you've done some amazing things in, in with with what you've done after football, after the NFL is uh, a role. You're a role, role model for anybody else who's questioning what they're going to do. I mean, you, you got your Ph.D. Holy yeah. cow. <laughs> I mean, that, that's pretty exciting stuff. Well, yeah, and uh, well, one thing about uh, uh, student athletes in general uh, and professional athletes, uh, they have all the tools. They have everything uh, innately inside of them to, to, to do whatever dreams and goals they want to achieve, but they just have to have a, a support system. They just have to have some people around them to help them um, through, uh, and, uh, through the storm and help them to navigate through everyday life because they really haven't had that because they've kind of been in a bubble for so, so long. And and, uh, and when they uh, are out there in, in corporate America or everyday life, the mundane things that you may think that uh, uh, someone wouldn't struggle with, they struggle with. They struggle with those things. So, um, so student athletes and professional athletes can, can accomplish uh, all the things that I uh, achieve and more. All they have to do is just stay focused. Uh, the book is called Is There Life After Football? Surviving the NFL. Obviously, there is life after football. You've got the Super Bowl ring. That's going to be with you forever. You're always going to be, yeah. uh, you're always going to have people wanting to meet you because of your, your past. Mm-hmm. But you also have doctor in front of your name now. That's, that's, <laughs> as, that's as good as an NFL Super Bowl ring, I would think. Yeah, uh, I would say that's number one on my list. Uh, a lot of people ask me all the time, what's the biggest accomplishment? Uh, it was walking across that stage in 2012. 
uh, not hosting up the Lombardi Trophy in uh, 1996. So I'm very, very uh, fortunate and very, very blessed. But I had a, a, a lot of people helping me along the way, and I'm very, very thankful and, and, for those in, individuals. And, and I'm not a professor of sociology, Dr. Jones, but, I'm, but if I give me an armchair sociologist, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like anybody who can, can uh, commit themselves uh, and be dedicated to the point where they can become a very successful football player, that same ability to dedicate oneself is, is probably how you become a doctor or, or the owner of a business or, or anything successful in life. Well, that's true. I, I, I think when we look at those former NFL players uh, who have successful transitions, what we do know about them is they take all of those uh, assets that they have that made them a great football player, and they translate that into, you know, the real world. Um, if we look specifically at George's case, you know, when he went to college, he selected a major that interested him that was going to be connected to, if he didn't make it in the NFL, that he could uh, work at that trade. Um, many people go to college to get a degree uh, and not to get an education that's useful to them. And so George is, uh, if you look at George himself, uh, he uh, has the recipe or had the recipe for success. He's driven, he's yeah. ambitious, uh, he's a hard worker, he's got a tremendous uh, support system, and although he struggled a little bit when, he, when the game left him, or he left the game. I'm not sure which way we should put that. Um, once he got got his bearings, um, you know, he was on the fast track um, to uh, another professional, which, professional career. Which I, I love the word recipe, because that's probably exactly right. And, and I do think that the book and your story, George, is going to influence and, and inspire a lot of people, whether they happen to have been former NFL players or not. Mm -hmm. uh, as I told you before, we, we know, too, I don't know if you were on the phone yet, uh, but we, Robert and I have worked with um, Don Nottingham from the uh, Miami Dolphins to yes. help uh, raise money for the Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of an honor, it was a, not kind of, it was an honor to be able to be in his presence. But that that fame and that glory, I think it, we, you still become starstruck, I think, for us who are not in that bubble, as you put mm -hmm. it. We're starstruck that you're on the phone. Exactly. <laughs> no, stop it. Stop it. Uh, both of you gentlemen really do have that drive that you, Dr. Jones, were referring to earlier because you have to have that drive to be very very sure of yourself in order to be a role model to others and to help others because you have to instill that positiveness that that the uh, person and and persons that you're speaking with have got to realize that that they can do anything and it is not without any work you you just can't be handed something you have to work for it right you're, you're exactly right and that's one thing uh, that student athletes and professional athletes bring to the table that <clears throat> they're smart, they're disciplined, they're driven. Um, they they know a little bit about um, leadership. They know how to work um, uh, together with the uh, other because you know the one thing about uh, working in higher education or corporate America, you have to work together as a team. And uh, you know I, because a lot of times you hear, you know, I, I remember when I was in college. Uh, um, my college coach said, "You know, football is life." Well, uh, football is uh, football isn't life. You know, football is a great sport, and I love it. You know, life is when uh, you're worried about terrorism. Uh, life is when you lose a, a loved one, or you lose a, a, a wife at 38 years old, and she had a uh, stage four breast cancer. That's life. But if you can get life uh, right, it can help you on the practice field. It can help you uh, in games and things like that. And uh, a lot of companies. Are, are craving to have uh, former uh, student athletes or former uh, professional athletes uh, within their organization because they know they're going to get some individuals that's going to work extremely hard to, to win. And what and we, you have to just define what win is or what 
those goals are, but they're going to do everything in their power to, to achieve those. Well, well said. Uh, gentlemen, thank you both for being on the air with us. Good luck with the book, and, and you're both welcome back anytime. I do have a copy of the book, Is There Life After Football? We'll have to give it away after we go off the air. How do we buy it? How do we, where do we go to buy it? Um, uh, you you go can to buy Amazon. it directly go- from New York University Press. Mm-hmm. Um, it's available both in hardcover and through Kindle um, or Amazon, Target, any of you know the online book uh, dealers okay. uh, have it. Uh, we're up against the clock. We have to run. Dr. Richard Jones and Dr. George E. Kuntz, congratulations to both of you for a wonderful c- careers and for the book and for being on the show. Thank you for that. Um, Thank you. And, and have fun in New York. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. For the middle class, part of the agenda he unveiled last night when he also promised to veto attempts to roll back his health care law. For Republicans, like Texas Senator Ted Cruz, the president's speech failed to hit the right conciliatory tone. He came back and doubled down on the same failed policies. President Obama has said he's hopeful that bills can be passed this year on trade and cybersecurity. Fox Radio's John Decker and a high school basketball coach in suburban Atlanta accused of biting another coach in the eye and nose. Her attorney says she never touched him. Fox News, we report, you decide. You're running your business, and we at Wix.com know things can get stressful. But creating your website doesn't have to be. With Wix, you can create a professional website all by yourself. It's easy and free. You don't have to be a programmer. Just drag and drop everything into play.